Hi, thanks for joining me in another edition of Motor Age's how-to video series, The Trainer. This month's topic, drum brakes. Today we'll offer a few tips on the do's and don'ts of drum brake service, so stick around. The Trainer starts now. Now we're not going to focus a whole lot on the uh, actual prepare process, but just a few tips and techniques to help you go along the way. The first is getting off a stubborn drum. They'll often rust between the hub and the drum, making it a little hard to get off. A little PB blaster or the rust penetrant right here where the hub and the drum meet. Uh, let it soak for a couple of minutes. And then a good wrap will usually shock it loose and allow you to remove the drum. Many of the Asian vehicles like this Toyota will have threaded bosses in the drum that are designed for you to install the appropriate bolt and then use the bolt as a means to pull the drum away from the hub. Uh, in this case, it's a six millimeter by one uh, millimeter pitch uh, bolt fits those holes. Uh, keep a few in your toolbox for when, the, when that situation arises. If it's really stubborn, mainly there's a lot of wear inside the drum, there's a little lip there. You may have to go in through the back and back off the adjuster so that you can remove the drum. But whatever method you need, make sure the drum is nice and free before you remove it from the car. Take a moment to inspect the inside of the drum. Look for any signs of scoring, heat cracks, or bluing from overheating. Also measure the inside diameter. Compare that number to specification before making the decision to resurface. If you do reuse the drum, Take a moment to put it in a bath of hot soapy water and wash away the machining debris left over after resurfacing. Now there's going to be dust and debris inside the drum and all over the, the brake components and shoes on the backing plate. This is something you really don't want to suck on real big lungfuls of, so wear, wear some type of breathing protection if, if needed to avoid uh, inhaling those, those, uh, uh, the debris, the dust. When you wash it down, use a brake washer. Uh, don't use shop air to, to blow it clean. Uh, and then you can go ahead and continue on with your inspection of the brake system. There's a few key things to inspect for on your visual inspection. Of course, make sure that all the attaching springs or hardware are intact and in place. Check the shoe linings for thickness. And compare those to specification. Also inspect the shoe linings for any signs of overheat, cracking, uh, real hairline cracks, where it looks like the, the material is trying to separate from the shoe. If you do see that kind of issue, make sure you look for what caused that to begin with. Also look at the wheel cylinder for any signs of fluid leakage. Now a little weepage, a little bit of staining is okay because of the type of seal used in the wheel cylinder. But if you notice that there's a substantial amount of fluid stain, uh, the whole wheel cylinder is coated in grease, if you gently pry back the edge of the cup and, and fluid pours from the cup, then there's usually then there's an issue with that wheel cylinder that needs to be addressed, either to overhaul the wheel cylinder or replace it with a new one. Drum brakes are a braking system that's also called a self-energizing system. The way they work, and all you really need to make them work, are the shoes and the wheel cylinder, something to spread the shoes apart. When the customer puts his foot down on the pedal, the hydraulic pressure forces the pistons from the wheel cylinders outwards. The shoe leading towards the front of the car when the vehicle is moving forward is referred to as the leading shoe, while the one in the rear is referred to as the trailing shoe. As the leading shoe comes out into contact with the drum, it creates a self-wedging effect, if you will, a self-energizing effect that will actually help increase the stopping power. However, if the brakes are out of adjustment, instead of good full contact along the, the length of the shoe, that area of contact is going to become less and less. That extra adjustment also adds to the pedal travel. So a sloppy pedal can often be just a simple matter of correcting the adjustment on the rear. Now, why do we need to correct the adjustment on the rear? Because often it's not being done by the automatic adjustment. Many of these work when the vehicle is operating in reverse or require operation of the parking brake lever to keep the rear brakes adjusted. How many of your customers do you know that actually use their parking brake? Now the brake shoes themselves can be held onto the backing plate a couple of different ways. This particular one uses a retaining button and spring. Others use a spring clip. 
Make sure you use the right tool to remove those. The springs that actually hold the self-adjustment mechanism together and the return springs for the brakes themselves, very important components. As we mentioned earlier, these are self-energizing brakes. These springs are vital to taking the shoes out of contact with the drum when the customer lets the uh, foot off the brake. Uh, good recommendation is to always replace those springs whenever the linings are replaced. Springs wear, they age, just like the linings wear and age. So replace them at the same time as you perform your brake service. One thing you don't want to use when you're removing these springs is a pair of uh, uh, dikes or any type of cutting, diagonal cutters, to grab a hold of that spring. I know it's tempting, but that will cause a weak spot in the spring that could cause it to come loose and, and lead to more expensive damage in the brake assembly. Carefully inspect the backing plate. In the backing plate, you'll typically notice three raised pads, front, three raised pads on the rear, that the shoe actually rides on. These can become worn and indented, causing the shoes to stick or bind. Any physical damage there may be able to address it with a file. If it's severe enough, replace the backing plate. During reassembly, apply a little high temperature grease to the contact points to cut down on any brake noise. To get a preliminary adjustment on the shoes after you've resurfaced the drum and installed new linings, you can use a brake gauge like this one. Insert it into the drum to the approximate inside diameter, then lock it into place. Then use the tool like a go no go gauge to confirm that the adjustment is close. Then reinstall the drum and follow the OE procedure for bringing it up to, to spec. Now the drum brake adjustments are critical. They need to be done the way the OE specifies. Too tight can cause overheating and damage to the linings, brake noise, and other issues for the customer. Too loose will have excessive pedal play and poor braking performance. To avoid contaminating the new brake linings while you're installing them in the car with the oil and contaminations that you already have on your hands, Take a moment to put some masking tape, painting tape on the linings. Reinstall the shoes, complete the brake job. Just before you put the drum on, remove the masking tape. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. Thanks for joining us on this edition of The Trainer. See you next month.